How are you, Teresa? I'm good, Mike. How are you? Good. Uh, how is Ryan doing today, and are you expecting him to practice? Uh, I think we're expecting him to do some things. Yeah, we'll see how it goes and, you know, continue to, to work through um, preparation, and, you know, we'll see how he feels. I know you're preparing for their offense, but Kadarius Tony has joined them recently. What, how do you, uh, what kind of weapon is he, and how do you think he, they could use him uh, against you guys on Sunday? I mean, uh, you know, explosive player, and we probably will focus on you know Patrick and you know Travis and the guys that uh, have been there. But you know, if Tony's out there, he's fast, he's explosive, and but. We'll have to make sure that you know those other guys are taken care of first. I'm talking with, uh, with with Malik this week. Uh, I wonder, what do you hope that he gained? What do you think that he gained from? Well, I mean, I think he gained experience. I think we all, you know, gain experience. You know, having been, um, you know, coaching my first game in the National Football League, or whether I played whenever I played in my first game, it's it's something that you you know won't forget, but you learn. And you make make mistakes. We all make them. Uh, and try to learn from them and and continue to improve and develop. With Travis Kelsey, what is it about him that makes him so, such a weapon for them? Well, I think first is instincts. I think he's got great instincts of coverage and leverage, uh, man and zone. I think he's extremely athletic uh, and 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 very competitive. So, he's got a huge catch radius, obviously, and I know he's always a challenge. How have you seen Patrick Mahomes just develop each year? I mean, just his comfort level, you know, of kind of what's going on with the defense is um, you know, his ability to extend plays but but stay out of trouble. You know, it really um, changes his arm angle. He doesn't get a whole lot of passes batted down at the line of scrimmage. Uh, his eyes are always downfield. They're always, uh, you know, looking at the receivers. And I think that they, you know, relish that because they know that they have a chance to get the ball. There's not a place of the football field that he can't throw it. Um, regardless of where he's at in the pocket or outside the pocket. The possibility of getting Elijah back, at least on the practice field, how much does can that give you another piece to work with on defense? Yeah, I mean, we've said all the time, we need everybody, and you know, we'll see where you know he's at. He's just you know getting back into it now, and we'll see how he looks today and see how he you know, responds to some of the work. Is it harder for a guy who... Missed a lot of time in training camp too, in addition to being injured during the season. Or is he he's smart enough to to kind of have a grasp of things? You think? I mean, you know, you, you practice. You know, we think practice is is important. Um, you know that. You know, I'm sure there'll be some technique things, and there's some things that we can't create uh, in rehab and return to play that you know he'll probably come across and some of the the, the reactionary things. So we'll see how he responds. And you know, I think mentally. As far as knowing what to do, um, he would be, I, I think, more than prepared. Um, but potentially, you know, doing it at a, at a at a speed that would be, um, you know, commiserate with being on the game field and in a game setting. I don't know uh, if we can create that. So we'll have to just see where he's at at the end of the week and try to make a decision. Mike, this franchise has had a lot of success running the ball even before you arrived uh, with the running backs that have come through here. Right now, across the league, uh, they're at the, league the, the rushing average per game is at the highest in about three decades. Uh, is, do you think that maybe uh, in this passing era, as it's seen in the NFL, that the ability that you all particularly have shown in running the ball, uh, reminding people that you can win in this league if you're able to run the ball effectively? Well, I mean, I think any great football team is balanced. Every great football team has a uh, level of physicality um, that they're going to need. Uh, you know, I think you, you kind of see what you have on your roster. You see who you have, and, and you build a team around it. Um, you know, I don't know what the numbers are, Teresa. I just, you know, we're just trying to focus on finding ways to win. And, you know, I, I know that the edge rushers in this league are good. Defensive players are good. Um, you know, the premium on taking care of the football and, and the, the winning percentages that are tied to turnovers. So, you know, there's a lot of things, but, you know, I, 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 I don't know what that could be or what reason that it might be. What do you think makes Dontrell here a good compliment to Derek and, and how maybe has he progressed since he's 
since he's been here? Uh, again, I'll just go back to his special teams and his willingness to, to go out there and, and want to be our personal protector on our punt team. Uh, I saw him go down there the other day, um, make a tackle, great ball disruption attempt, try to rake it out of there. Um, you know, and those are that's just from sitting in meetings and, and listening to me talk to defensive players. Uh, you know, a rake's not something that you would normally practice on the punt, but you know, he went out and executed it. Ball didn't come out. I'm hopeful that next time it will. Uh, but him as a runner, I think he's progressed as a first and second down back. He's got good vision. He's got quickness. He's decisive. Um, you know, he r runs from under center, uh, runs from behind the quarterback, and you know, as well as in the gun. So, you know, I, just, I like having him around. He's been a really nice addition. From your perspective, how is that synergy between Tannehill and Todd Downing been as far as like what plays are up, what plays are down from from week to week? Great. I mean, I I think there's great synergy. I think there's great communication. I think they get to the end of the week and uh, meet and visit and, and go through, you know, things that the quarterback um, really sees well and has a, has a vision for and feels like he's got answers for, for different coverages or pressures. Um, you know, and then you kind of go into the game and then you kind of work through about what you're getting and sometimes those things change. Expecting Hooker back out there today? I don't think Amani will be out there today. Anything specific you're looking from, for, from this team the next three days of practice? Uh, you know, I mean, we talked about, you know, upgrading our standards about how we do things, how we come into the building each and every morning. You know, we choose the type of attitude that we have. Um, you know, we choose to, to be on time, to be accountable. Uh, our mental preparation you know, just all the things that, you know, you, you don't want to, you know, take for granted this time of year. You want to make sure that, you know, everybody is, um, you know, elevating the things that we do. you emphasize at all this week what this game could mean in tie-breaking procedures later on or anything like that? No, no, I don't. I just focus on, you know, ways that we think we can beat the Chiefs and how we can, you know, prepare. Um, because I think all that stuff really takes care of itself. I think the... You know, the preparation um, and how we get ready and how we ultimately play and not what could be or what might happen in, down the road. How did Zach to do with his return? Yeah, I mean, I think he, he ran around. I mean, it looked like he was trying to be physical. And, you know, this week, you know, he'll have to prepare for a different different offense. But it was good to have him back out there. And, um, you know, he came out of it good. And I think he'll... Continue to get back under it. How much difference did, did Nate getting back in the lineup make for you guys, and what kind of sort of strides have you seen him make this year in general? Well, he's been limited. I think that there's been some some strides. I think that you know, he's doing some good things, and then was out. But um, you know, Nate's one of our better better offensive linemen. So um, you know, it always helps to have your best players in there. Mike, kind of circling back a little bit, it, it, even though it's a passing league allegedly, that ability to be physical and play hard and, 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 and hit people. and It's football, hope. Teresa. It's football. You know what I mean? And I think that uh, you got amazing athletes that are, you know, competitive and, and physical and fast. And, you know, that's what the game is designed to be. And whether you have, you know, I mean, there's been plenty of teams that play with 11 personnel that are physical. Um, there's teams that play with two tight ends and two running backs. It just, it's still football at the end of the day. You're going to have to um, have collisions and, and people are going to have to be able to withstand that, you know, over the course of a game and a course of a season. And, um, and that, that's how it goes. What problems does the Chiefs defensive front pose for you? Well, you know, Chris Jones is one of the most athletic three techniques interior defensive linemen that will play, uh, but they also, you know, have guys that are going to be able to grind it out. And so they're a good complement, you know, to, to Chris. You know, he, he kind of wreaks a lot of havoc and, and has, you know, penetration. He's so good with his hands and his, his hips, you know, his hips are loose. And for such a big man, he can play all over the front. Um, you don't tack, you know, don't block Bolton. He'll, he'll make the tackle. Gaze fast and, and explosive, um, you know. 
edge guys all do a good job. I know Frank's not out there, but you know Carl Loftus is getting um, more acclimated, and you know so it, it's. You know I mean, they don't give up a whole lot of you know rushing yards, and uh, they they do a good job of affecting the quarterback. How have they done minus Tyree <coughs> continuing to to push the ball and threaten consistently? Well, I mean, they're the amazing quarterback. Um, you know, guys guys are available. They're at the spots. They know you know there's some catch and runs. They've broken some tackles. You know, Juju's broken some tackles. Um, you know, and offensively they. They do a nice job of getting guys the ball in space, you know, whether that's you know 50 yards downfield or uh, you know eight or nine or ten yards, and and they break tackles. For some of these younger players, nice to have a Monday night football game where they had to kind of prepare all day or kind of manage that time and then be ready for something like this another night game. Yeah, we probably won't use any examples from the Monday no, night game I, previously. I, I, yeah, so maybe not. <laughs> Using the example of the time, but you get what I'm saying. So. Yeah, I get what you're saying, Tris. <laughs> I get what you're saying. Um, yeah, about having a game day pregame routine and about not laying in bed all day and getting up. Yes, I, I got all that. You talk a lot, a lot about your respect for Andy Reid in the past. I mean, what, what do you think uh, was the reason for his sustained success? Or I, 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 I'll tell Andy, uh, you know, Andy Reid's good for football. He loves football. Uh, the relationship um, seems that he has with his players is something that uh, you know I obviously uh, would love to emulate. Um, he's very consistent. You know, he's been you know, some of these same plays is you know, plays that he ran when I played against him. You know, I mean, there's just a consistency, but also you know a willingness to always um, push forward and uh, take advantage of his personnel. Yeah, he's obviously a Hall of Fame football coach. Walk through today? That's, yeah, that's what we're doing today. So you'll be able to participate in the, in the walkthrough today? Yes. How surprised were you the week played out like it did and you weren't able to go Sunday? Um, disappointed. You know, I think uh, obviously wanted to try to try to be out there as I, uh, as I still do. So we'll, we'll – uh, have to deal, you know, we, we dealt with, with what last week was and uh, unfortunately wasn't able to go and, you know, trying to get myself ready to go this week. How would you think the week helped you be able to stay off of it, not put extra stress on it? I mean, it definitely helps it heal, right? Um, and it's just kind of where I was at, just just needed the time and, and uh, you know, wasn't able to do my job or, or protect myself, so, you know, wasn't able to go. Was the sickness, Ryan, was it the sickness? Factor more than the ankle, the same, or you know, was it a combination of the? Players? No, it was it was the ankle. Yeah, sickness sucked, but you know, would have been able to uh, to get through that one. Would you? Where'd you watch it? And what was the experience like? I watched it at my house. Uh, it was weird. Uh, you know, kind of felt surreal. Didn't feel right at all. Uh, my kids were asking, you know, why, why am I yelling at the TV? <laughs> like, you know, you don't usually yell when you watch football. I'm like, yeah, this one, this one means a little, little bit more. You know, so. Uh, yeah, not, not a good feeling and not something I want to make a habit of, that's for sure. What's it like seeing Derek do his thing from that perspective, though? I mean, obviously, it was fun watching those guys play. Uh, the offensive line was surging all day. You know, we had more finish points in that game than, than we've had in a long time. Um, guys that were getting him into the line of scrimmage, you know, he's able to, to hit the line of scrimmage with a full head of steam, which is what we talk about. Um, pushing piles, finishing downfield, receivers were blocking downfield, um, you know, receivers battled all game, you know, even though they weren't getting much much attention outside uh, in the past game, uh, they battled all game. So, you know, I have to tip, tip your hats to them and the way that they just came to work and were unselfish about it. And um, really, as, as a full group, it was fun to watch them run the football. When you watch film, <clears throat> you've been so used to watching and evaluating yourself. What was it like when you watched the film and you're not out there and you're having to evaluate that film and go forward? Oh, different, right? Um, definitely. <laughs> You know, like like being able to work on specific things that, that I did or or could have done better, um, but still try to take a look at the tape, see what we did well as an offense, and and um, things we can build on and things we have to get corrected. What were your impressions of Malik? Did you guys get a little chance to talk about the about the game and his experience? At all? Yeah, I talked a little bit. You know, I told him I was proud of him. You know, uh, at the end of the day, he went out there and uh, and found a way to to get a win, and that's the job each and every week. So, um, you know, I was proud of him. Ron, you mentioned that this team right now is 32nd in the league in total offense. 
as long as the record is what it is, is that the most important stat uh, for everybody? Yeah, of course. I mean, you play to win. It doesn't matter if you have the, you know, some prolific offense or some prolific defense, but you, you can't find ways to win games, then, you know, what are we doing it for, right? So uh, the ultimate goal is to, uh, to go win games each and every week. But when you're out here practicing, I mean, what do you hope to accomplish this week that will convince you, hey, I feel good, uh, I'm, I'm a go? Yeah, just being able to, uh, to do my job effectively, um, be able to move around, uh, you know, like I said, do my job, protect myself, and, and um, you know, be able to not be a, not be a statue back there, right? Because that's not going to be an effective way to play a game is, is to not be able to move at all. So, you know, I have to be able to, uh, you know, move around in the pocket, evade a rush, get outside if I need to, that type of stuff. Where does Arrowhead rank in terms of the toughest places to play in this league? Oh, it's tough. Yeah, it's a it's a fun place to play. It's an atmosphere uh, that you dream about when you're a kid. You know, going into a into a, a rowdy road environment, and that's exactly it. And they, they love football there. They're loud. They're into it the whole game. Um, just a great great place to play fo to play football. Excuse me. How do you feel? Thirty second ranked offense. I mean, five and two is obviously more important, but that's not ultimately where you guys want to go and want to be. And, and you guys are going to have to be higher than that to get there, aren't you? Yeah, ultimately, you know, we want to, you know, win championship, and so, you know, whatever it takes to score more points than the other team each and every week, that's our that's our job. If you take a second and look back at how things have changed since the last time you were at Arrowhead for the AFC Championship game, how do you feel this organization has taken a step forward since then? Oh uh, yeah, it's been a few years now, so you know, lots changed since then, especially people-wise. You know, don't have a ton of guys on this team that were on on that team. Um, but we've stayed steady. You know, I think the, the organization is, is true to what we believe in. And no matter who comes in, in the building, we stay true to that and, and get everyone to buy in and, and keep charging ahead. And you guys have won two consecutive AFC South Division titles. I know it was a loss, but do you feel like that just getting to that game may have been a launching point for, for the organization? I don't know. I don't know. You know, I think, um, yeah, it was a good thing. But we're talking about four years ago now. So, you know, I, I don't know. We, we have a lot of things we believe in and, and people we believe in in this, in this building. So, um, you know, it all starts with Vrabel and, and the, the, the Tony sets from the, the top. And um, Jay Rob and the guys he brings in. And, um, you know, that message is preached day in and day out. And our guys buy in. And we've seen our, our formulas effective. It's been a long time since your rookie game, your first game, obviously, Ryan. But when you were watching the tape from Bleak, were there any things that you could relate to say, oh, oh, I see what what happened there, or I see what he was maybe doing or thinking or seeing in, in that regard as a, as a rookie. Yeah, it's been, been a long time. Uh, my, my rookie, my first game wasn't wasn't too good. So, um, you know, just just watching him, you know, I could see you know his mind going and the things he's going through. And it's all learning experiences, just like it is for me out there. You know, so um, like I said, proud of him and, and the way he battled through and, and found a way to win. Ryan, what's the process of working your way back? The process of what? Working your way back in this week. Yeah, just getting back into it. Um, you know, slowly, slowly working into it with the ankle, and and you know, see where I'm at, uh, day by day, just moving around and, and getting ready to go. Overall, the pain kind of going away a little bit, or you feel like it's still. Uh, I mean, pain's going to be there. That's just kind of where we're at with it. Uh, unfortunately, uh, with the nature of the injury, it kind of is is there. So, um, just going to be a matter of, of if I can if I can do my job or if I can't. Is the plan to have you more involved in practice this week? Than, than you were last week? Like, have you progressed to that point? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. You know, um, gonna going to take some reps today. So uh, we'll start there and, and move forward if we can. Is there anything you've done so far on your own, or is it just today's going to be the first day? As far as what? Just working with the ankle. I mean, I'm rehabbing every day. You know, doing everything I can, uh, working through uh, with our training staff here, um, all the modalities and treatments, and um, not working into exercises, and just getting the, getting the thing as strong as possibly can. One of the challenges to Chris Jones, just how long he is for you? Yeah, he's a great player. Uh, all around, you look at him, uh, he's disruptive uh, in the run game, disruptive in the pass game, gets to the passer. He's long, he's strong, uh, he's quick, he's great with his hands. Uh, so, you know, definitely one of the, the top players on the D-line in the league. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.